We, of course, can rewrite this using the nomenclature. I keep, I keep trying to say that word and I'm struggling. Uh, we use the nomenclature and we rewrite it using a single integral operator, but we imply that it's a surface integral using the letter S, and we have dA implying del, uh, dx dy as well. So we see that the closed line integral of q dot dr going anti-clockwise is equivalent to the surface integral of del m del x, which is of course equivalent to q sub y del x. So looking at what we had already in terms of p, we see that we have two line integrals, one for a vector field which uh, points in the i-hat direction and the other for a vector field which points in the j-direction. Now just note by the way that this one here is positive for this one here is negative and that's, that's not an error, that's in fact the way it should be. We know of course that del m del x and del l del y are going to be heights and that's something I'm going to discuss now in a moment. So what does this particular surface or double integral actually represent? Well, let's discuss this again. What we'll do is we'll start on the left side of your screen here, and we'll start with the uh, with just with the xy plane. So let's try and visualize the xy plane here. I know it's going to get quite crowded, but here's our xy plane. So let's take each of our functions. Let's say we took either del m del x or del L del Y. It doesn't really matter, just pick one of them because both will do the same sort of thing or the geometry will be the same. So both of these, they're a function of some, fort, so, of some sort. So let's just, let's draw an arbitrary function here, just like I've done. Now, but this is going to be above the XY plane because it's a function of both X and Y which puts it in the Z dimension. What this means though, is that the projection of the surface del m del x or del l del y onto the xy plane will or the yeah the surface up here whatever it is is going to give you the surface enclosed by the line c so we had x and y which gives you a height above the xy plane the projection of this particular function onto the xy plane is going to be the surface s and the surface S is the same for both of the integrals which we've seen above. The point is that the curve is the two-dimensional projection of the 3D shapes del L del Y and del M del X onto the XY plane. Let's just remind ourselves what they look like. We have del M del X here, del L del Y or minus del L del Y. We have the closed line integral equivalent to the surface integral. Now let's see if we can put the whole thing together. Let's begin by defining a new vector field, capital R. Let's say the capital R is the sum of P and Q. Of course we can do this because P is simply in the I hat and Q is in the J hat. Or we know that we can rewrite it as an L and M. Now the reason I'm doing this is because some people use L and M, some people use P and Q. So I'm trying to cover all of the bases. Now let's see what would happen if we took the closed line integral of the vector field capital R dot dr. Well, capital R now has both an i hat component and a j hat component. So when you dot it with small r, you'll still have two components, one in the x and one in the y, just like we have here. So you have the closed line integral of L dx and M dy. But we know what these are already. We can substitute the two expressions we had above in. Now I'm trying to bring your attention to the fact that one of these is minus and one of these is plus. But of course these are over the same surface. Same surface and same curve. Both are surface integrals, dA. So we can rewrite these as a single integral. And we see that if we take the closed line integral of an arbitrary vector field in two dimensions, x and y, dot dr, it's equivalent to the surface integral of del q del x minus del p del y. Or del, del l del x, excuse me, del l del y and del m del x. And you might be saying, how come I'm using all of these variables? 
it's for no particular reason other than other people when discussing Green's theorem will use L and M or P and Q. So I'd just like to show you where they go. This is Green's theorem. Green's theorem says again that if you take the closed line integral of a two-dimensional vector field in X and Y, it's equivalent to a single surface, or excuse me, a double integral or a surface integral of del Q del X minus del P del Y or del M del X minus del L del Y. It's the three-dimensional version of what's called the divergence theorem. It's kind of like that. And later on, I will show the relationship between Green's theorem and the divergence theorem. It is very important to note that the Green's theorem or Green's theorem only applies to closed curves. We have derived it only for closed curves and it is only valid for those. So if you ever come across an open curve and you're looking to apply Green's theorem, you should stop yourself there and then and correct yourself. So that's all I've got to say about this for the moment. In the next video, I shall derive, Green, derive Green's theorem using a slightly different method and use Stokes' theorem. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and you might also give a, a visit to universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.